involved. I knew I could do more. But when my mama died, it took something out of me. When I went through a divorce, it took something out of me. When, when my best friend died, it took something out of me. I parked. And somebody said that life is like an onion. You have to peel it one layer at a time. And sometimes you cry. Life's going to happen to you when you have a dream. You're going to get slapped around. And don't take it personal. Don't ask, why did this have to happen to me? Why not you? Who would you suggest? You want to give us some names, some email addresses? And don't tell everybody. 80% don't care, and 20% glad it's you. It's called life. Suck it up and move on. Get over it. It happens to everybody. Here's the other thing, as you look at your goals and look at your dreams, when you're going through some stuff, repeat after me, please. When things go wrong, when things go wrong, don't go with them. Don't go with them. Yes, write that down. When things go wrong, when things go wrong, don't go with them. When you're working on a business deal, you're counting on some money. Someone said you will get the loan and it falls through. You have an event. And the people that you thought would be there and support you, they don't come through. Or someone turns against you or you get ripped off. It's going to happen to you. Happened to me. Someone stole all my products, my database, over 180,000 names and addresses. It's not personal. It's going to happen to everybody. It does. Eight out of ten millionaires have been financially bankrupt. Walt Disney had seven, he filed bankruptcy seven times and had two nervous breakdowns. It's called life. But I got a saying, when life knocks you down, try and land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. You've got the power in you to do that. You've got something special. You've got comeback power. Do you hear that? Do you hear that, entrepreneurs? Les Brown has told us that we have comeback power. We have power to motivate ourselves through the most harshest of strategies. You know, things that strategically are set against us in order to prevent us from getting to our goal just to see if we really want it bad enough. Welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 30. This is a motivational practice that I want you to meditate on as you're going through deciding what it is that is going to be your mission and your vision for your future, your goals, your perspectives, and see if it connects. Because I'm telling you, <laughs> it's going to be a challenge, but you're not alone. There's two things in America that individuals every one of us have experienced, and that is letdowns and setbacks. And when we can see that, it's a setback on purpose. Now we're empowering ourselves to decide what it is we want to do. Everyone, no matter what they've gone through, can successfully succeed in any mistake or any disappointment that they've had in life. A domestic violence individual can help traumatic, experienced individuals get over because they've experienced it. Individuals who have been incarcerated can come back and they can help and support their community because of the things that they see that they need that is not available to them. And they can help by being a leader not a pigeon, not a group of pigeons, not a group of, of geese just wandering around, but a leader. And it's not always easy to be a leader. It takes a profound background. It takes an experience of knowing ethics and morals and values and not dealing with your own trauma to the point where you cannot help the underdog because you haven't helped yourself. 
But when you have recognized that you have helped yourself and you've healed through that journey, now it's time to move into something that we understand. And this understanding is the morals, the values, the ethics, the fabric that's going to make you who you are. Let's keep listening to this motivational conversation with Les Brown. Here's the other thing. Let us say together, it's possible. It's possible. It's necessary. It's necessary. It's me. It's me. Yes, write that down. It's me. It's me. Take ownership for your life. Nobody can live your dream for you but you. Nobody's going to take care of your business like you. Stop coming up with excuses. Don't give yourself permission to continue to live a small life. You can't fit a big dream into a small life. Give yourself permission to go for it, to test yourself, to challenge yourself, to live full. I like the saying, always strive to get on top in life because it's the bottom that's overcrowded. Hmm. The reason you're here is because... Did you hear it? It's better to be on top of life than on the bottom because the bottom is always crowded. Like I said, those geese, those pigeons just sitting there doing whatever, looking, the crows, you know. On, uh, I guess, uh, oh, goodness, what movie was that? Um, The Wiz, The Wiz. (laughs) The crows are always there telling you you can't do it. It's not going to work. Maybe you should try it a different way. Don't do it that way. Don't do it your way. Because your way is too unique. It may not work. It may not work. But if you believe in you and you take that unique journey, you never know what's on the other end of that uniqueness. Oh, God, this is a great, great episode. Welcome to all my new entrepreneurs. I hope you are listening. I hope you're feeling this energy because that's success. That's the energy of success. Let's keep being motivated. Something in you that says... I can do more. This just can't be it. There's something in you. There's a calling on your life. There's something in your heart that calls you to get dressed and and spend the money to go to seminar after seminar and listen to message after message and speaker after speaker. Because there's something in you that tells you this is not it for you. You have not peaked here. There's more in you that you are expressing. Eye is not seen, ear is not heard, nor is entered the man, heart of mankind. What's in store for you if you challenge yourself, if you persist and persevere, if you take ownership for your life? George Bernard Shaw said the people that make it in this life, they look around for the circumstances that they want, and if they can't find them, they, they create make them. them. That's right. It is important for us to make what is not available for our community. And then those naysayers who sat back and knew that it needed to be done as well, when they chose not to do it, they're just going to look at us and say, okay, well, they were the ones that did that. They were the trendsetter. They were the entrepreneur. They were the leader. They were the inspiration, the passion, you know? And, And it doesn't take any particular person who is just born under that. No, anyone can do that. All they have to do is keep taking the next step in the right direction, not worrying about how you're going to make a million bucks, not worrying about how you're going to make the new patent that's going to, you know, be the next Facebook, but just doing your part, just your part. You know, so many people have been taught that the only way you can become a millionaire is to take somebody else's dream away from them and create it and add it to what you can do and then do a little spin off. That's not what it is. That's falsivity. That's false. It's false. Create what you want. You have the power in you to do the more than you can ever begin to imagine, to control your destiny, to make a difference in our children, to make a difference on the planet, to make an impact. Thank you. Let us say together, it's me. It's me. And let us say together, it's hard. It's hard. Say it like you know it. Say it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's hard. But it's me. Let me tell you. We're sitting here dealing with, you know, individuals who are complaining about a educational system that's failing our kids here in Youngstown, Ohio at this moment. 
um, public city schools. And one thing that I recommend is never to create a system where everybody is under the auspice of one individual form of thought, train of thought. Go out there, start your own, you know, privatized, privatized school system, you know, to help empower individuals and take on 10 students on your own and go get what is known as a license to teach and teach if that's what you want. But don't just allow an entire city of students who are depending on teachers to go, they end up going on strike because they're not getting, you know, the curriculum that's expected. Okay, they want to move out of that curriculum into the newer curriculum because that system is outdated. If you think about it, the educational system is older than the technology system, but technology changes every year. Look at the iPhone. The educational system has still been existing under the same system, and it will not change. It will not change because the powers that be controls that mindset. You have to pull yourself out of that equation and put yourself into a position of power leadership within yourself, not to go and fight against the system, but be, if you're afraid of not making the money because, you know, uh, the individuals are not paying teachers their wage rights, then guess what? You need to pull out and try believing in yourself and see how much money you make the first year. That's the motive, your paycheck is the motivation that keeps you stuck in the reality of what someone else wants for their life, not for yours, but for theirs. Let's keep listening to this motivation. People who have seen their retirements taken away from them by the corporations that they work for. Mm, Let's talking about that. Two or three years of retiring and they had it taken from them. The number one entrepreneurs in this country now are senior citizens. The number one employer, number two, McDonald's and Walmart. And there's nothing wrong with those jobs. I guarantee you those people did not have a plan to end up living their lives at the end of life with those types of jobs. And they didn't have a plan like you have and while you're investing in yourself not to. Mm -hmm. And it's hard. There are people making choices between purchasing prescription drugs or paying for gas or a mortgage note. It's hard when you're working on a job for 20 years, 30 years, give them some good years, and then they come in and tell you, we've downsized. Mm -hmm. In other ways, other words, you're fired. Mm, you're done. And then you have to start all, all over. over again. And I did that. I was in that position the Mahoning Public Library in, I want to say, 2007, uh, 6, 2005, 2006, they were the first. I was part of the first laid off, you know, group of people who had ever been laid off by the public library. 85 years they were in business. When we created that Newport Branch Library on the east side of Youngstown, or the south side of Youngstown, and that east branch library on the east side of Youngstown, they laid me off. It was the best thing that could have ever happened to me because that was the same year I decided to take on my opportunities and go into business for myself, 2006. It was scary. I only had $50 and a food stamp card and some books from the public library. And I created a youth program and I, I made sure that, in the, that these 10 students who studied and read during the three months of the summer that would otherwise, they wouldn't pick up a book, their grading, their grades went up phenomenally and they were rewarded. So there's just things you have to do in order to empower yourself, you know, um, empower others to believe in themselves. So that's why Chronicles of a Nonprofit is here, because it's 
it's about the passion and it's about the mission that we create for ourselves that makes us who we are eventually. And when they're talking about those Walmart workers, when Les Brown tells us that, it is absolutely true. And I've gotten to the point where I would rather know that I am the entrepreneur and the leader of my life to where I know what I have in my bank account by the end of the week. And I'll know if I'm going to be laid off that next week or not, because I'm the one running the opportunities through my life. And I want you to think about that as well. Let's keep listening. How many of you know it's hard? Raise your hands, please. It's hard. And it's not fair. One of the things I like about T. Hobb is he talks about work and investing in yourself. It's not fair, but people are going up against that kind of stuff to tell them just think positive and be enthusiastic and everything will work out all right. <laughs> Ain't that kind of party? Nope. It's hard. Life will put some nuts on your head. I bought my first home for my mother. I was rushing, didn't know what I was doing, and I bought a home that had a lien against it. And they called me, Mr. Brown, yes, there's a lien against your property. We need $55,000 if you're going to stay there. Wait a minute, sir. I just bought this home. The guy told me there were no liens against it. I'm not the one that owe you the money. You should have checked that out, Mr. Brown. Listen. Entrepreneurs, ignorance is not a defense. And I want you to really, really understand that when you are thinking about even organizing your life to the point where you are running your household as a leader in your household, ignorance is not a defense. What your children do, do under your roof is not, ignorance is not a defense. You saying you didn't know does not mean that it did not happen or that it's not going to affect the whole entire household. So please be mindful of that. That's so important. And for those entrepreneurs trying to focus on real estate, I've seen individuals actually purchase a house and spend cash, 30, 50, 60, 70 thousand dollars, and they didn't have anything to show for it. And the individuals just took their money. These are, these are things, so you got to know, you got to research, you got to know what you're doing. You got to motivate yourself to say that if this is the path I'm going to go through, I'm going to learn all I need to know about this path so that I'm not like those individuals that Les Brown is talking about. Yes, there are going to be times where it's going to be right in the nick of time. We're going to almost be at that point of breaking and losing it all. But there could be a ram in the bush if we have belief in ourselves and have some other irons in the fire. Make some more residuals. Make some more opportunities for yourself. Don't just sit and be comfortable with the position you're in. Move beyond that. So when you are there, you're already steps ahead of the game. A few more minutes and then we're going to close out tonight. Come on. I call my attorney. We follow up. Yes, Les, there's a lien against the property. But he told me there were no liens. He lied, obviously. Hmm. Oh, my God. He told me he wanted to help me because he admired the fact that I was buying this home for my mother and that he was adopted and he, he identified with me. Hmm. Les, he suckered you. Yeah. He played you, man. Listen. Listen, entrepreneurs. Emotion is the biggest destroyer of leadership. Your emotions are going to make or break you. And it is so ironic that I'm running into all my past things that were always so very emotional for me. Because what it's doing is the universe is preparing me for my next leadership level. And in order for me to get to that level, I have to empower myself to realize that I've conquered the emotional demon of my life that wants to keep me in poverty, wants to keep me emotionally driven to the things that are no longer here for me. They want me to think about things that are stronger to see if I've overcome them. Well, yeah, 
And the reality of it is, is if you don't overcome them and if you don't heal, when those exams come again, you're going to break down. It's going to destroy you. It's going to distract you. It's going to throw you off your square and you're going to be back there still dealing with things that doesn't even matter anymore. This is a new day and a new time and entrepreneurs, I want you to really, really stay focused on that. Let's finish hearing the story of how this helped Les become a better person, even though he's looking at it like this is really the end. Let's listen. So what, well, would they take payment arrangements? Can I, what about $5,000 a month? They want all the money, Les. They want all the money or you're going to have to get out. The house is going up for sheriff sale. Do you have it? No, I, I don't have a Can they give me some time? Tell them to give me, give me three months, please. Give me three months. I, my mother's in her seventies, man. She has a bad heart. Don't do this to me. This is my dream. Don't do this, man. Please t- let me talk to them. Les, I'm talking to their attorney. They don't want to talk to you. Mm. I've got to talk to the attorneys. Do you have the money? No. Will they give me three months? No. What about two months? No, Les. They want the money in seven days. Mm. Oh, my God. Let me call you back. I'm not sure. And I walked the floors thinking, God, how could this happen to me? I've got to figure this out. Huh? I've got to figure this out. It seemed like the days were just ticking off, ticking off. Thursday, I had to call them and let them know they called me. Les, do you have the money? No, I don't. Friday, you have to leave. The sheriff will be there. You're going to have to leave, Les. They're going to take my house. What about my down payment? You lost it, Les. You lost it. Okay. I got to go. Yes. I prayed, Lord, please. If you show me that you're real. If if it's if you're really real, you think Paul worked for you. You've, you haven't seen anything. Don't let me lose this house and watch what I'll do for you. I was trying to cut a deal. <laughs> Hmm. Have you ever tried to cut a deal? Mm-hmm. It's amazing how spiritual you get when you get in trouble. You know what I mean? <laughs> when I was diagnosed with prostate cancer, I was going to bed with the with the Bible and the Holy Quran and the science of mind and Joel Goldsmith, everything I could find. I was paying to Jesus, Yahweh, Melchizedek, everybody. I was calling on everybody. It's amazing. I'm telling you, when that amazing time where you have that personal conversation with your higher power. I'm telling you, I was facing 34 years of my life and I said, oh my God, if you just help me, I don't know what happened, but most high, if you just help me, I promise this, I promise that I'm going to work till I can't work anymore. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be the advocate for you. I'm going to do, I'm going to help those who are less fortunate that don't know the way because they were never taught to know the way. I'm going to really, really empower them and make them feel like kings and queens. These are the things I was saying, just like, oh, my God, when I was sitting on that cot, not knowing what was going to take place. And and 41 days I sat in the belly of the beast. And I tell you the power of negotiation. Now, Les probably has that same, you know, epiphany. But let's listen. And um I hope he gets right to the house situation because he's going everywhere. <laughs> okay, let's go. And, and there I was walking the floor at 3 o'clock in the morning, and I had to go and wake my mother up. And I got on my knees, and I said, Mama, I said, I need you to wake up. She said, what's wrong, Leslie? I can, I can hear you walking back and forth. I'm not asleep, son. I said, there's something I need to tell you. She said, your eyes are red. Why are your eyes red? Because I feel so stupid now. Why? We got to move tomorrow. Why, Leslie? There's a lien against the property, and they want $55,000, and I don't have it. And we're going to be set out tomorrow. We have to go back to Liberty City. So she said, it's okay. I don't like this house anyhow. I said, why? She said, because of my arthritic knees. It helps. It hurts my knees when I go up the steps. I said, and why didn't you tell me? Because you were so happy. I just said it because you were happy. Mm. I'll live in a shack with you, boy. 
I love you. It's not the house. Mm -hmm. I love you. I love all my children. And that's said, thank you, Mama. And that's the key. When we as entrepreneurs have a passion, it is not about making that million dollars. Yes, that money will show up. It will show up and show out. And many of the times it'll show up double, triple, quadruple. Okay. And we don't even recognize that we've made it already, but it's the passion and the desire that, you know, you want to work doing what you love. So it won't feel like work at all. And that's what I want you to know, entrepreneurs. And, and just like with the relationship with Les Brown and his mother, that relationship is powerful because most people are born into what another person can purchase for them to make them feel empowered. That is the most <sighs> traumatic experience, thinking that it is the thing, the amount of money, or the material possessions that make us who we are when truly and genuinely it is ourselves, our internal being, and what we give back to the world. I thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to this podcast. If you found this to be helpful, please hit the like button and please come back and see us. Join us, subscribe to the Chronicles of the uh, a Nonprofit. Episode 30, this is August the 23rd, 2023. We will see you. I'll try to do these podcasts um, until I get caught up. Um, so I will be coming on. Sometimes it'll be first thing in the morning. Sometimes it'll be after work. But I just want to let you know that I'm thinking about you. And I hope that you always make the right next decision that is going to benefit your mission and your passion for your business, for your life for your relationship, for being even a parent. A parent can learn so much from these chronicles because they are all about life's lessons. Okay, thank you so much. And we'll see you next time.